Are you looking to use the switch activity in your Musk Fabric data pipelines to build some conditional logic, but maybe you are a bit unsure how that activity works? Don't worry, I got you covered, since the switch activity is the topic of today's video. Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Muxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we are continuing our journey with Muxed Fabric data engineering and in this video we are going to cover the switch activity in data pipelines. This video is also part of my Muxed Fabric data engineering series. A link to the playlist can be found in the description below. But now let's talk about the switch activity that provides the same functionality that a switch statement provides in programming languages. For people not so familiar with programming, I would say that this is kind of the big brother of the if condition activity that we have already covered in the previous episode in this series. Since the switch activity allows you to add multiple branches compared to just two branches that were available in the if condition. But enough talking and let's fire a fabric and do a quick demo slash tutorial together to see how this activity works in action. Now I have the fabric open here. Let's start by creating a new data pipeline and let's name that pipeline according to our naming conventions. And then we want to start with a blank canvas. And this time we want to add the switch activity to that canvas. And here we can see how does the switch activity look in the pipeline UI. In here we can see that this is an activity that encapsulates other activities and we can add other activities inside these branches that we have here. Currently we only have this default branch here and let's just add wait activity here and name that default. So we can see when the default branch is used. But the point of this activity is not just to use this default branch and add their bunch of activities. The point here is to add some other cases or branches here where we can have different activities. So let's open up this activities tab of our switch activity. And here we have this button add case and let's add a couple of more cases here. Now we have cases one and two here. Let's name those cases a bit differently. Let's name the case one as file one and case two as file two. And here we can see that we could add now some activities inside these branches as well. Let's add wait activities to both branches and let's name those activities based on the branch they are in. And here we add file 2. And now we have three wait activities inside our switch activity, but all of those activities are inside different branches. So we are not going to run these during the same execution. And now we can talk about how we decide which branch we are going to use when the pipeline executes. Before continuing with this video, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Max Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. The way how we decide which branch will be used is defined by this expression here. And if you remember when using if condition we have these two branches and our if condition is actually expecting to have a boolean expression. So we decide do we go to the true branch or the false branch. The switch activity is a bit different since this expression have to evaluate the string value and then that string value has to match with one of these cases here. So basically the string value coming out of this expression would have to evaluate either the file 1 or file 2. And if it doesn't evaluate either of those, then this switch activity would go to this default branch that is always present here and always mandatory to have. In many cases, you most likely want to use the switch activity after you have run some other activities and used their output and use that as part of the expression here. For example, you could have a get metadata activity that would check what is the file name that you have in your storage and then do things based on that. But now let's keep things simple and let's just add parameter to this pipeline and let's call that file name and let's add default value file one here and then we would have to use this parameter value here in the expression so we would be able to pass it down to this switch activity so basically now we have that 
parameter here and based on that parameter value we are going to decide which branch we are going to go since we are just using that raw parameter value here in the expression and we are not doing anything too fancy here. Let's now run this pipeline and let's see what happens. And for the parameter value we can use the default value of while 1 this time. And now our pipeline is running and I think it should finish really quickly since we are not doing anything special here. And we can see that our switch activity went to that file one branch since we ran that file one wait activity there. And you can see that we didn't run the default wait activity or file two wait activity. And now let's run this pipeline again and let's type here file three. And as you can see, we don't have file three branch available here. This would mean that now we go to the default branch and like we did. I hope you now have an understanding how the switch activity works in Microsoft Fabric data pipelines. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.